Phantom, the eighth generation of the iconic Rolls Royce. I'm Greg Migliori. This is Joel Stock Stocksdale, and we're going to take you to this event. Uh, they're just getting started right now. It's in London. Uh, as you can see, there is uh, sort of the pre-roll of the event. That's the CEO of uh, Rolls Royce. He's uh, he's rolling around in the new car. It's uh, this is basically the presentation that. All the people who are live on site in London are seeing. So uh, let's listen in. Celebrated luxury item, our magnificent new Phantom in its eighth generation of a car that has been the choice of presidents, monarchs, industry titans, stars of stage, and also screen for nearly 100 years now. And it will be a rare and historic moment tonight. And why have you chosen Bonhams and why London? Rolls-Royce is a quintessentially British luxury brand and all our cars are manufactured here in the UK. And Mayfair is the heart of the luxury goods world. And no street is more synonymous with luxury than Bond Street, I think. And Bonhams has a reputation for selling some of the world's finest luxury items. Vintage wines, classic furniture, fine automobiles, and of course, Rolls-Royce's own work of art to the world here tonight. And that is, of course, going to be the main event, but it's not the only thing that's happening tonight. That's right. I'm also opening tonight the Great Eight Phantoms exhibition, how we call it, to celebrate the arrival of the new Phantom. We have gathered seven of the most significant Phantoms in history from all over the world. And this will be the first and only time such an extraordinary collection has come together. And the exhibition will open to the public on Saturday, 29th of July. It can only last five days, so hurry up to Bonhams if you can, and I bet you, you won't be disappointed. Oh, it sounds fantastic. Well, now you know where we're going and why we're going there. Let us go and see some history unfold. Well, here we are on the red carpet at Bonhams. Bonham. Before we get into the exhibition, do you want to introduce us to the two pioneering founding fathers of Rolls-Royce? Yeah, of course, with great pleasure. Uh, these are the... Okay, we're going to jump back in here just as you're watching the festivities here. Uh, you can see the CEO waltzing into uh, what's likely to be a very star-studded event in London. Uh, wanted to let all of you know that our story is now live. The embargo for this piece of content ended at 4.01 Eastern Time. It's out there, so please head over to autoblog.com, check it out. Everything you want to know, it's uh, really interesting. you got to check it out. Uh, we now know a lot about this car. Joel, uh, what does this mean now for Rolls-Royce? Well, it's a big deal for Rolls-Royce because the Phantom is the top of their lineup. It is the most special of all the Rolls-Royces. It's the most expensive. It's the most exclusive. So it's a big deal because this, this is kind of the car that represents Rolls-Royce. Absolutely. That is That sums it up perfectly. Uh, as you can see right now, the... Uh, the CEO, he stopped on their way into probably the gallery where they're going to show this. You're seeing some of the great, uh, great people in the past of, uh, of Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce is all about heritage. Uh, that's a bit of a cliche, but in their case, it totally rings true. Uh, right now, it looks like they're moving uh, farther along the red carpet. Uh, so I think we're, uh, we're going to listen back in. And each one owned by a very special person. And this magnificent Rolls-Royce has to be the jewel in the crown. Her Majesty the Queen has graciously consented to allow this magnificent Phantom 6 to be part of the exhibition. Her Majesty was presented with this vehicle by the British Motor Industry to mark her Silver Jubilee in 1977, and it has been in almost daily use since then, perhaps most famously to transport the Duchess of Cambridge to Westminster Abbey for her wedding to Prince William. Another royal phantom is this beautiful phantom four, which was once the third Ark Khan. So, some fours, all of them for royalty or heads of state. And interestingly, he personalised this phantom with a very early version of a personal dictaphone. 
but let's go back to the earliest phantom, the phantom one. We have a hat, we have a cane. It could only belong to Fred Astaire. And I'm joined by Liz Ferrin from the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, which now owns this phantom one. So tell me, how did Fred Astaire come by this beautiful car? So after a very successful career on Broadway, Fred made his way to London for the opening of Funny Face on the West End. And after it was decided that that would be renewed into the following summer, he placed an order for a Rolls-Royce Phantom One. This car is actually a Sedenka DeVille, so it's a single cabriolet, which means that the front portion of the car, the upholstery is a hard tack leather, and the interior car, which is much more opulent and where the passengers would sit, is a beautiful silk brocade. And it's just the most wonderful and sort of a evocative vehicle, isn't it? It just says Fred Astaire all over. It, it certainly does. Well, Liz, thank you so much for telling us about it. You're very welcome. Now, just over here, and in keeping with the entertainment theme, is probably the most recognisable phantom in the world, John Lennon's Phantom 5. Now, this incredible car was regularly seen driving around the streets of this very part of London, ferrying John Lennon and the Beatles to the nearby Apple Corps headquarters. Well, now it lives in the Royal British Columbia Museum in Canada, and curator Dr Lorne Hammond has joined us here, flown over with the car, for the exhibition and my goodness what stories you must be able to tell about it but tell us first of all about this wonderful paint job because it wasn't always like this was it it was originally valentine black uh, it was ordered and delivered in the spring of 1965 and in the fall it took the beatles to buckingham palace to receive their mbes so when did he decide to create this amazing piece of art they were mixing down sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club band and uh, he commissioned Steve Weaver at J.P. Fallon to make the design and uh, it was approved and he sat in the garage uh, with cans of house paint and put the design on the vehicle and it was delivered nine days before the press conference for Sgt. Peppers. There's so much more I know you could tell us but there's an awful lot more to see here at the exhibition because of course the Phantom is not the preserve of heads of state and film stars and musical mega stars. It's also been the mainstay of heroes and adventurers, seeing them through triumph and adversity. This beautiful, unusual Phantom III was owned by Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery, who was the commander-in-chief of all the ground forces at the D-Day landings in 1944. Now, it's known as the Butler Phantom, after Alan Samuel Butler, who was the chairman of de Havilland Aircraft Company, who installed the unusual forward-sloping windscreen, which was to make the car more aerodynamic. And also, although it has been painstakingly restored, you can still see a scorch mark on the dashboard from Winston Churchill's cigar. Another great British adventurer was Sir Malcolm Campbell, who broke four water speed and nine land speed records in the 1920s and 30s. He was the first man to ever drive a car at more than 300 miles per hour. Well, this beautiful Phantom II was for everyday driving, I should make clear, but I'm delighted to tell us more about it and about his relationship with Rolls-Royce. This is Malcolm's grandson, Don Wales. Don, thank you so much. He really did love Rolls-Royce, didn't he? He did. Grandfather was a big fan of Rolls-Royces. I mean, this is just one of many that he had. It's a lovely blue, shiny example of it. But not only that, I mean, he used the Rolls-Royce R-Type engine to power his 301 car that you just mentioned, but also his boat, Bluebird K3. So it's the only engine to have held the water speed, the land speed and the air speed record at the same time. Well done, it's wonderful to talk to you and to find out a bit more about the Campbell Rolls-Royce connection. Thank My you. My pleasure, thank you. It's almost time for Torsten to reveal the new Rolls-Royce Phantom, but before then, I have one more great Phantom to show you. At one minute past midnight on the 1st of January 2003 at Rolls-Royce's brand new headquarters in Goodwood in West Sussex, this Phantom 7 was launched and marked the renaissance of Rolls-Royce in the 21st century. And since then, for the last 14 years, Phantom 7s have been flying the flag for Rolls-Royce and they have become the most popular and successful Phantoms ever. Truly beautiful, highly bespoke Phantom 7s have been commissioned by customers all over the world using precious gemstones and painted silk and exquisite marquetry. Genuinely, they have been works of art. Well, time is now ticking down. But we're going to hear from the chairman of Rolls-Royce Motor Cars, Peter Schwarzenbauer, first. Thank you so much, Katie. I am truly proud to be here today to share in this historic moment. Rolls-Royce is a very significant part of the BMW Group's collection of highly 
emotional brands. And we are deeply committed to the future of this wonderful mark. A new phantom, which we are going to be showing to the world in just a few moments, is a very significant landmark for us and for the luxury sector as a whole. Now, before he leads you into this new chapter in Rolls-Royce's history, let me hand you over to Torsten to say a few words. Thank you, Katie. And also, thank you, Peter, for your kind words. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here at Bonhams in London on this truly momentous occasion. As I look out at this incredible collection of beautiful and famous Rolls-Royce Phantoms, it makes me very proud to be the chief executive of this great British brand the most celebrated luxury house in the world. Each one of these phantoms represents the very best of what man was capable of making during each of these successive eras. The best of ingenuity, luxury, beauty and perfection. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we will raise the bar of luxury higher still. In a few moments, you will witness the beginning of a new era of great phantoms, the eighth generation, of this great nameplate and the future of the iconic Rolls-Royce brand. It's time to leave the past behind us now and to look to the future. And it's time to introduce you to the new Rolls-Royce Phantom. So the big moment is almost here. We've been told that the new Phantom is a completely new contemporary reinterpretation of the Phantom DNA and it's going to deliver a whole world of increased presence and new elegance. So, let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, you who are viewing this around the world are about to become amongst the first to see our new Rolls-Royce Phantom. It is a creation of great beauty and great power, a dominant symbol of wealth and human achievement. Prepare yourselves, the world is about to stand still. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to present to you the ultimate luxury product in the world, the eighth generation of Rolls-Royce Phantom. When it doesn't exist, design it. Our founding philosophy. You don't just build the future, you commission it. Made in your image, not for your image. The world needs icons to lead the way. And for those whose presence has the power to inspire greatness, there is only one choice. Unmatched, unrivaled, one of one. That was all extremely impressive. Torsten, let's get your initial reaction. How excited are you feeling? Highly excited. Uh, I would lie if I'm 
would not be excited. I mean, it took us years to bring Phantom uh, uh, into the world, and today is that moment, a seminal moment for Rolls-Royce motor cars in history of the brand as well. It's only the eighth generation of Phantom, and it doesn't happen very often that you launch a Phantom. For that reason, I'm excited. The whole company is highly excited and couldn't be better. Congratulations, and Peter, a final word from you. I can't agree more. Rolls-Royce is on a roll and Phantom is in the lead. My thanks and congratulations to everyone here and in the greater Rolls-Royce factory at the home of Rolls-Royce at Goodwood and around the world. We should all be very proud of this moment. Earlier we caught up with the designer of the new Phantom, Giles Taylor, Rolls-Royce's design director, and asked him about the design inspiration behind this beautiful new car. I believe of all cars and of all Rolls-Royces, Phantom is about travelling in quintessential style. Phantom, in my view, should possess a contemporary yet timeless style. Our design vision was to bring Phantom to life with a heightened sense of elegance in its line and a perceivable swiftness of foot. Starting at the front, the grille is taller and larger, but in some ways less stiff, more laid back, and fully integrated into the bodywork for the first time in the history of Phantom. From here, the body of Phantom develops, and one immediately perceives the elegant bright trim that envelopes the bonnet and front screen into a single graphic entity. The eye is carried gracefully up and over the cabin. Look at the power of the front bonnet silhouette. It's nearly horizontal because the grille is taller. The front wing gently rises to present this power. It peaks just over the front axle, bringing the car nicely up onto its front wheels. Phantom sits gracefully onto its rear wheels with a faster raked rear screen and a flowing rear face treatment that pushes the car forwards. The waft line sweeps the eye underneath the car, providing the visual sense of air, or magic carpet as we like to say, upon which all... Okay, so they're wrapping up from London here with the reveal of the 8th generation of the Phantom. This is a car that's been around for 92 years. One of the most iconic nameplates, cars in the industry. Uh, this is our you know, initial look at the vehicle. Joel, what do you think? Well, it looks, it's very much a, an evolution of the previous model. It's a Phantom. Yes, <laughs> and you will not mistake it for anything else. Um, it's maybe a little bit on the conservative side for a redesign. Yeah. So as we look at some of the commenters and we encourage you if you're, you know, you've been watching the stream, hit us up on Facebook, hit us up on Twitter, let us know what you think about this car. We're happy to answer some of your questions. One of the ones, first one right off the bat was how much is the price? We don't have that information right away. Uh, if we get it, we'll be sure to pass it along. I can tell you right now though, if you have to ask, I think you know the rest of that saying. Uh, other couple things. Yeah, a lot of people are saying, well, it looks a lot like the existing, the current Phantom. I agree. I think that's the idea. This is a segment, you know, much like the 911, for example, where designers play it conservatively. They want it to look exactly like a Phantom. So they definitely played it safe here. Uh, there are some differences. The grille is a little bit taller. The car is shorter. Uh, it's got a new domed hood, which if you go to our article, please check all of this out on autoblog.com. You can see some of the pictures. The hood is domed. It's a little bit different. Uh, there's a new touch screen in the front seat. So for, you know, for your driver, you know, he or she has a nicer experience up front. I think that's cool. Uh, under the hood, we've got a turbo now. V12, 6.75 liters, 563 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque. Uh, that's up considerably from before, and I think uh, for those who will be driving the Phantom, it's going to be a lot more fun. Yeah, and I mean, getting into deeper numbers, uh, Rolls-Royce has also released 0-60 to 60 times claimed for the Rolls-Royce short wheelbase and long wheelbase. They're within a tenth of a second of each other. That's interesting. Really, yeah. really, really impressive, actually. Yeah, the short wheelbase will get to 60 in 5.3 seconds, and the long wheelbase in 5.4. It's, uh, yeah, you know, going back to some of the commenters here we're getting different reactions some say it looks nice uh some are saying well hey they didn't really push the styling envelope uh you know i got another commenter who says that was underwhelming uh why is it better is another good one well like we said you know new engine some new design elements even though they're pretty close to the current car some new features inside and out and uh you know it's a I think it's a safe play. I think it was a smart play. This is what they basically had to do. This is their flagship. This is their most expensive, 
you know, the, the highest falutin Rolls Royce you could possibly get, uh, you know, that model line. And I think they, you know, they played it safe. And if you look back at the history of Rolls Royce Phantoms, they didn't necessarily change a whole lot from generation to generation. There were those moments where there was a bigger leap forward in design and technology. Like, uh, I mean, just for instance, with the previous generation Phantom, that was a that was a big leap from what Rolls Royce was building beforehand. And I don't know if maybe maybe just in recent memory, because of that, this feels a little bit underwhelming, but it's kind of in line with Rolls Royce's history. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. I think it's one of those things where, you know, they know their market. The luxury market is really strong right now. The global luxury market is it's one of the best times in history. It's definitely uh, a high season for that. And there was no reason to do something that would be risky when there's so many good competitors out there. Whether you're, you know, you're looking at, you know, frankly, vehicles that might cost a little bit less, but they could be more compelling. So Rolls-Royce doubled down on who it is, what they are, and I think that's totally fine. Uh, going, to, uh, going to Facebook here, we got a question. Uh, are those laser lights? Yes, they are. Uh, Rolls-Royce says you can see those uh, at night well over 600 meters down the road. So that's, uh, that's pretty far. That's yeah. uh, almost half a mile, not quite, doing my metric conversions. Uh, so, you know, there's definitely some, uh, some sophistication uh, baked into it. Uh, we've got a price guess here uh, from one commenter who thinks $480,000. I think that's in the ballpark. What do you think, Joel? Yeah, probably. That might Maybe towards the uh, long wheelbase segment, because I think previous Phantoms have started around like 300000 right? Or Ballpark, yeah. yeah. They're, they're one of those things where it's almost like Ferrari. Like, you can find out how much they cost, but it's not exactly listed, you know, like on shopping sites. You can compare. It's, you kind of got to, you know, you got to know somebody, you know. Yeah, and I mean, that's also before adding a plethora of fancy options. Um, in fact, and... Just as an example, some of the options you can have on this, the dashboard has this interesting uh, custom section uh, on to the right of the instrument panel. And for the reveal, Rolls-Royce showed a few different options. One of them had porcelain flowers that had been custom made for this dashboard. Um, another one had a 3D model of the owner's DNA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just ridiculous stuff. <laughs> I mean, when you, you know you have some money, when you can have your DNA basically customized and injected into your car. I feel like that's, that's definitely a, a plateau where uh, not many people walk. Uh, another thing I like is the Spirit of Ecstasy, the hood ornament. You can get that in silver, gold, or illuminated polycarbonate. Uh, our writer, uh, Mike McGrath, who wrote this piece, speculates that they'll probably do it in any material that you want, and I agree with that. I think basically the Phantom, this is, this is what you could get, but I'm sure if you have the means, you could definitely uh, you know, make it a little even more special. Yeah, I mean, Rolls-Royce has their bespoke uh, department that will custom build a Rolls-Royce. As long as you've got the money, they will do, <laughs> they will do whatever you would like. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a prestige vehicle. Uh, you know, again, I'd encourage everybody. Lots of strong reactions coming in here. People are excited about this car. People are, you know, a little divided about it. I think that's great. Please reach out to us on all of our social channels, and we hope you've enjoyed the reveal here of the eighth generation of the iconic Phantom. For Joel Stocksdale, I'm Greg Migliori. Thanks for watching.